Hey, good morning. You are back with the crew. Today we have a sad little story and uh, follow up about Sam and his situation. Uh, this just keeps getting uglier, but today we're going to get a little more uh, conspiratorial, if you will. One of the angles I hear a lot of people talking about is the connection between, you know, Gensler and, you know, the SEC and his relationship with Sam's girlfriend and it's getting real deep and it's getting political even and it's it's really going working its way through uh the entire what i like to call the circus the circus has arrived and they've set the tent up directly over ftx when the circus comes to town it's never good you're you're in the middle of the crosshairs of the media and they're gonna pick the winners and losers and they're gonna tell you who the problem was and they're not gonna really tell you what the whole situation really is. They're just gonna get you all whipped up and lathered up about what's wrong with the world. Let's get down to some brass tacks. First of all, I may have told this story many times, but I was driving my car down the road. This is 2017, I believe, and I heard the media say these exact words. The credit card companies, American Express, you know, Visa, Fed, uh, American Exchange, uh, all of these companies all came out, even Discover Card came out and said, they all came out the same day, well, within two days. They said, we will no longer allow you to buy cryptocurrencies on a credit card. Now, the first thing that crosses one's mind when they're driving in the car is like, well, gosh, uh, that kind of makes sense. It's kind of uh, not my mind. Immediately I went, what? Hmm, excuse me. That's different. What, what, what? Wait a minute. I can't buy something with a credit card? Since when do they tell me what I can buy and what I can't? A. B. Why are they telling me it's because of its volatility? Well, now, Alan, you know why. See, you could crash and you could have lost all your money. Except for one thing, you and I can hire a jet that we can't afford. We can fly to Vegas. We can max out our credit card, put it all the chips on a red, and spin the roulette wheel. Is that volatility? It's insane volatility. It, it, they allow people to gamble daily on their credit cards. So it's not that. What is it? What is it really? Why? What is the big picture there? Well, whenever they throw somebody under the bus, like FTX currently is under the bus, it tells you they wanted that to occur. Now, how do I know that? Well, I am not even trying to be conspiratorial. This is the facts. We have quadrillions of dollars of derivatives out there. Deri most people uh, know what derivatives are today because of 2008 and the, and the housing crash. But a lot of people don't understand what derivatives are used for. And nine times out of ten, it's to prop somebody up. They don't want to fail. Well, why didn't FTX, since we know he was in a bunker, if you will, probably at that point, that weekend calling everybody, he was calling CZ, he was calling everybody he could possibly call to, to find a lifeline. Couldn't find one. Why couldn't he call Uncle Gensler, <laughs> the connection between you know his uh, professor at MIT, why couldn't he call those people? I'm sure he did. Of course he did, right? Why did the phone go quiet? Why, how come he didn't get a loan? Why didn't they take 30% of his company and his cattle, uh, collateral and say, okay, well, you owe us this, but we'll bail you out? Why didn't he get a bailout? Everybody gets bailouts. Why did we print trillions of dollars and just hand it to other corporations, but we won't hand it to that corporation? They wanted it to fail. So that's no longer speculation. I just explained to you why that's not a speculation. So... They could have saved FDX and they could have saved the people that are invested in it or made them whole in some way or another, but they chose not to. So that leads you down the conspiracy angle of they wanted it to fail all along. I'm not going there, but I am going to say this. 
Whenever we buy things on leverage, leverage controls you and owns you. You don't know who owns the strings of the leverage. Okay, that's the deep, dark banking system that a lot of us don't know a lot about. But I will tell you, they're ruthless. And when it's your turn to be under the circus tent, it's not a good place to be. So, the beautiful part, okay, about crypto, in my opinion, and why I believe you're in the right space, is you don't have to be a wealthy person to own crypto because you don't need leverage. You can buy XTC for three cents right now, two cents. Uh, Divi, I love Divi, it's a penny right now. You don't have to buy and leverage. So this is a lesson really about leverage. Don't get yourself leveraged. If you don't own the gold coin and it's not in your hand, you don't own gold coin. That's the way you should really be looking at this whole mess. That I know a lot of people are going down the whole rabbit hole of this whole show right now, but I really want to bring up that whole mantra of, oh, we'll just put it on credit. We'll just put it on this. We'll just, that's fine. That's fine if you're talking about a home or if you're talking about a car. They're just too expensive to save up money and buy. Not financial advice. You should buy a home and, and save up and buy a home if you feel like that's your avenue that you'd like to go down. Now, crypto, you don't need to buy on leverage. Don't buy on leverage. The only other way you can leverage yourself in the hands of other people is putting your coins on somebody else's exchange. Now, I want to talk about this because a lot of people have asked me in the last few days, and they're absolutely correct, what wallet is safe? If your wallet is not leveraged, in other words, if they're not giving you interest in your wallet, you're not leveraged. Okay? So, a lot of these are good wallets out there. There's great wallets out there. There's, there's Atomic, there's uh, Decent is really good. I, from what I understand, I'm, I haven't done too much with them, but I know that they get high marks. Uh, I like Exodus Wallet. I mean, there's Lobster. There's many of them out there. Okay. If you're going to put your coins on a wallet, online wallet, Make sure that you have done your research. It's, it's as important to do that as it was the research you did in putting in that you did to buy the coin. Boy, I spit that out really well, didn't I? So I personally think cold wallet in a safe is the way to go. And if you don't know what that is, that's Ledger Nano S. Ledger Nanos are pretty much a standard at this point. There's some companies out there. There's a, a few people that uh, will sell you security items that go in between your computer and your internet. Um, those are really good. Uh, silverbacks, I believe those were called. Those are great too if you're going to leave your coins on a laptop. There's uh, a, a few different avenues. You can take the SIM chip out of the back of an old phone and you can put all your crypto on an old phone because it no longer has connection to any uh, Wi-Fi or a, a connection. It just becomes a, you know, essentially a, a storage unit at that point. Those are all good ideas in the world we live in today. Don't get leveraged. Don't buy anything that you can't own and you don't have the keys to. You don't own it. Now let's talk about why I think. It's a great idea to be involved in crypto. Not only is it 25% cheaper, I'm not trying to be a told you so guy, but I've been making videos for over a year now, but like a few months ago, I said it was a good time to buy. Well, turns out that wasn't a perfect trade, really was it? So got that one kind of wrong. However, when I said it was a good time to buy, I said it could drop 50%. It's dropped 25. So, people, it could be going another 25% lower. I don't think it's going down to ridiculously numbers, uh, small numbers, because we've just had two of the worst crashes and two of the 
biggest institutions in the crypto sphere and bitcoin dropped to 16 and then now it's back up to almost 18 again today um there's a lot going on the reason why you own crypto is because banks don't they don't claim to they do um but when they get in the game you're going to be way ahead of the game the other thing is you don't need, not only do you not need leverage, you don't need their opinion as to which one to buy. That's where they're trying to weasel in right now. And it's really kind of disheartening to me because people think that because of what's happening with FTX, we need legislation, we need rules, and somebody needs to go to jail. All of that never works out very well. That's why we have crypto is because you own them. You are your own bank. You own your own wallet. You are responsible for the tokens in which you own. Okay. It's, I'm a skier. I've skied my whole life. One of my favorite things about skiing is the freedom of it. You jump on a pair of sticks and I've jumped off cliffs on top, but from the highest peaks in North America, off cliffs with sticks on my feet because of freedom and the freedom was there to fail. I've had many of my great friends destroy their physical bodies in many ways, myself included. I've had really bad accidents, but that's the freedom that we need to live in. You're not, there's nothing, there's nothing worse than sitting somewhere and knowing you can't do something because of legislation and law. Those people are not going to legislate crypto away from you. I'm telling you they're not going to do that. You have VPNs, the rest of the world doesn't care what the SEC thinks. Those people are looking like real clowns right about now. And that clown show could come to an end soon, I hope. And Mr. Gensler is in some hot water here. He, he's obviously been exposed, and they're going to do what they do always to expose members of what that whole group is about. All right, I'm just trying to keep this one short, but let's not just roll over and, oh, please make the pain go away, make it safe and secure for everybody, and let's just re regulate and legislate us to tears to the fact that it'll never go up. Once you legislate and regulate cryptocurrency, they'll never go up. They'll never go up the way they do now. There'll be too many laws. There'll be too much that what comes with that bank support and the, and the Wall Street support comes with, oh, I need a percentage of that. But I need a half of a cent of all the gas that it takes to move my coins from point A to point B. Oh, we need a little commission from you. Oh, we need a little tax there. We're being taxed. We got to, you know, push the tax to you. And, you know, it's just a fee and it's a one-time fee and... Yeah, we don't, that's not what crypto is. And it's up to you and I, the real stronghold of crypto world, to make sure that we don't give those rights away. Those people do not represent us, I've talked about that before, in this space. They're not on our side. They are not the enemy, they just aren't wanting you to thrive the way I want you to thrive. All right, guys, with that, I hope you got the leverage story. And uh, it's just a short one. I just wanted to cover something that maybe somebody else hadn't covered. And I didn't want to get too conspiratorial. With that, guys, I'm out.